So, misschien voor um, iemand wat voor ochtend uh, visit of um, die laatste ruk dat ons ons bijeenkomsten gaan missen. So, iets wat we hier met ons als gemeente praat is dat um, Paulus die er al zei. Um, misschien moet ik iets wat ik tijdens worship ervaar. Ik zal hopelijk weer aan die einde van die woord iets wat weer zeggen, maar ik heb toch al voor ochtend terwijl ons met met worship bezig was en ik nant is ons het voor die tijd ook al weer gepraat. Is, um, second hand information, revelation, word of God does not carry you through life. Beter woorde, ek sikkel met rechte woorde. So in gewone taal, Ergens het ek en jy, elkeen, een persoonlijke oortuiging in ons binnenste nodig. Wie God is en hoe hy moet ons handel. Ek en jy kan nie staat maak op die oortuiging en ervarings van iemand anders. He. It does help, but it won't carry you. En wat ek net vir ochend so sterk ervaar het in, um, in worship, is dat die Heere elkeen van ons, hy het, hy het so behoefte om met elkeen van ons Die, die Jacobse voorbeeld is te ressel, om te stoei, stoei moet die heren. En ek wil jou aanmoedig, whatever circumstances you are, where you find yourself, don't search for video clips and sermons and shorts, en ek weet nie wat al sê, dat so baie inlichting al buiten, dit eindelijk wat dit maak, dit los ons leeg, alle inlichting op die einde van die dag, my ervaring, het liefst as empty. It really doesn't feed us. It's not the way God meant it to eat the word. This morning is good, but it won't carry you. What you hear this morning, it is not strong enough to you to draw nie. What is, is your own re, re, um, wrestle and your own revelation and conviction, personally, that can carry us. And we need the body to add to that but without that, nothing the body adds will help. And no, no good sermon. And, ja, um, yeah. so ek, ek hoop jylle, jylle hoor dit. Nee, en dis Godse, dis Godse uitnodiging vir elkeen van ons. Wrestle with me. Wrestle with me. I want you to be convicted. Ek wil nie hee, as jy nou taf oomlik is, wat, en moet jy nie staat maak op wat Anna Owens sê nie. So now, tawe oomlikke and tawe plekkes, you personally need to experience God and to know this is the God I serve. And He wants that for each one of us. So, uh, as a congregation, we, we felt that God speaks to us about maturing. And then sometimes I find myself following after Christ for 21 years and behaving still like a boy. And God wants us to become men. And I don't know what we would call for the ladies, but you, un- you hear my heart. And that um, right through all the letters of Paul, you find Paul writing, I'm contending for your maturity. I'm praying that you will become mature. And this is what God is inviting us to. Because, and I think for me, just over the last few years, I would say after COVID, God has been so gracious to me in this process and the freedom that I experience in it, I mean, I'm, my heart is longing, and I know everyone's heart is longing for it. Have I attained it perfectly? No, not at all. But I will tell, I'm still a boy sometimes. But, um, but when you find that place of peace because you've matured, not because all circumstances are good, but because God has done something inside, you experience the freedom that Christ has called you to, in his truth. So that's that's where we are journeying and um, what God is speaking about. And maybe just a summary as we've um, we've been studying the word and, and, and talking and sharing. Ach, we found those four. Maybe there's another ten. I don't know. If you find anything, please share it. Um, so ways that we find in scripture that God's mature us. And I just added this, this little picture here this morning. Um, because I've, I find that I'm not maturing by only having relationship with God. 
God chose it that we have to have relationship with one another. He designed it like that. You are designed to have intimate, transparent, honest, real relationship with people. That's the way God designed us. Without that, I want to guarantee you maturity is out of reach. So maturity doesn't happen in isolation and obviously not without God. So that just those, those, I whistle work, this is all three. But the, the four ways that I found in scripture, and maybe as I've said, there's more. The one is, is, is in Hebrews um, 11, where it says, constantly practicing, discerning between good and evil. So it's not a knowledge, it's a practicing, it's a moral living matures us. We've spent about that two weeks ago, we've spent some time on that. And then obviously there's, there's experiences through life that um, we've spoken about the first Sunday that we, um, we, we started talking about maturing, that we need healing from. Because we are walking with pain, we are walking with wounds, and that keeps us from maturing. Because there's a memory in the brain, there's a memory in us that reacts in a way that is actually immature. And it's just because there's something still with us, and God wants to heal us from that. Um, and then I think, Brett, Brett, you will be serving. There's very few things that matures us as serving people. And not on and off, continuously, not running away, but staying, staying and carrying on, walking with people. And all of us is broken, it's tough, but to serve matures us. We'll spend some time on that. Um, chart sent me, I can't remember the scripture chart. Philippians 1. Philippians 4. 4, 1, 1, verse 1 to 4, I think. But anyway, how suffering matures us. And um, anyway, so just, just a bit, we, we'll, we hope that God will talk to, to us through all of them. Um, help us. He has been talking about that for a long time. So that's just a bit of a framework. And then uh, maybe for someone who's new, I thought just, just the symptoms of immaturity, because if someone says I'm immature, I uh, normally struggle to see it, you know, and, uh, but then when words and situations are just put, put up, I say, oh, okay. Comparison, fear of rejection or failure, fear of failure, uh, anger, defensiveness, possessive, manipulative, promote self, blaming, preoccupied with self, performance, people pleasing, inability to laugh at yourself, you're not vulnerable, no risk, external validation, my whole identity is built on what other people say about me. As long as that is affirming, I've got peace, but, okay, what, what was the next one? Not vulnerable, no risk, external validation, perfectionism, overworking. I think there's another slide, Lisa, that's adding to that a few. I suppress my emotions. I just cut it out and I carry on. And on the end of the day, I feel I'm And so I'm a professor in that geweers. Avoid intimacy. So we're just not intimate, you know? We, we are with one another, but there's always an arm length between me and you. I don't allow you closer than that. And this can happen in relationships for years, not allowing someone close. And it's, I don't know why, but it's so easy to see these things in other people. It's makkelijk. Jy dink nou sê aan een paar ouwens wat jy nou sit en dink terwijl ons die goed lees. Nee. It's so easy. I don't know why. So easy to see it in other people. Avoid intimacy, envious, inferiority. When I walk into a room, I always feel not good enough for some other reason. Sure, I, I, um, I made a note somewhere. I'm, I'm, why did I miss it? So I'm going to give it now because I, when I prayed this morning, I felt God invites you personally to ask him why. To have conversation and have the courage to ask, Lord, why? 
Why do I feel inferior when I walk into the room? Why? Ask God. He wants you to have conversation with Him about it. Or, why do I always take the path of least resistance? I am, I'm only in survival. I know you that week, I was so lonely and this is what happened. It's too much. So I'm just in survival. I'm not living. I'm just surviving. Not what God intended. It's just too much. Busy, busy, busy. Resistance to change. Because this, is, this, is, this feels safe. I, I don't want to hear anything else. I'm just resistant to change. Okay? Insecurity, intimidated by some people, unhealthy value of my appearance. I always have to be perfectly perfect before I go out, you know. Perfect. Isolation. Oh, this is so, this is the most important thing that has happened to me. I can't track me. Isoleer. So as as it you happen to you, Lord, why? What, what's going on? Your vrouw vrouw of your man of your cell group shall now come by you. Who will us the good? When there's actually something from the eyes of heart. Lord, okay, I see these things in my life. What do we do with them? You know, we, we, how do we handle it? What, what is God's invitation? Um, maybe just um, a, a scripture from 1 Thessalonians 5.23, just to know that you are body, soul, and spirit, each one of us. I was so old to Edgar that he learned it. You know, I had just learned that there was nothing else in my life. But um, body, soul, and spirit, understanding ourselves, and this is, and, and, and what the scripture says is now, may the God of peace, listen to it, may the God of peace, God has called you to peace. And how can I do it? Um, in the week, um, in the months, um, in the years, um, and I experience everything else except peace. But God has called me to peace. God help us. He wants us to have peace. It's not a theoretical thing. It's, it's practical. God wants us there. He says, may the God of peace sanctify you completely. What does sanctify mean? To clean you, to heal you, to perfect you completely. From all these things except the peace that he wants for you. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage us. This is, this is, this is a process, a lifelong process. Storm Angus, what they say, we die daily. So, so God wants us, he wants, don't, don't stop, don't, don't think, okay, now I'm, a, I'm okay where I am. If we allow God, don't, don't get disappointed. Because the freedom that we experience if we allow God to do this is just beautiful. So, you are soul, spirit, and body. And all three of these has an influence on one another. And therefore, we, we need to trust God to heal in different areas of our lives. And he said what I have done and done. If any of those, and I'm going to put a few words on it, maybe just, why do I put up these words? Because myself, I struggle to identify and put words to what I'm feeling because I've never learned in life to express what's going on in the inside. It's only... Never in life, I don't know how long I've been, but I'm not going to trust what I can't do. But she helped me. She would make, make a cup of tea in the evening when I come from, out, uh, from, from work. So, Tell me, what do you feel on the inside? Because she, she, she could see something is wrong. But I haven't had the skill and the ability to express it. Is there more men like that or not? There's another thing, Brendan. So, so it's something that we can learn over time. It's something that we can learn. And we need someone to love us and, keep, and, and, and create safe space where we can do it. I think teenagers and young people also struggle with it. So why these words help me? Ah, this work full. So it's the only reason why I put it up. So, so um, but I want to encourage you this morning, if it's the only thing you take away this morning, ask the Lord why. Lord, why? Why am I feeling like this? What's, what's going on here? And I, oh, okay, I'm not going to run ahead. A few years ago, we were at Convergence, Shofar's conference thing every second year. 
And this little diagram was put up there. It's a, it's a pyramid changed upside down. Lisa, you can go there. Um, and what's happening? Good. Thank you, Lisa. I thought the technology let us be stuck, man. So, ah, and 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 you see something of this. You see something of this with Yitro coming to Moses. Moses was overburdened with everything that the people, the Israelites, was going through, and 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 Yitro said to him, says, "You're going to burn out. Let me give you advice. Teach the people. Equip the people." Then divide them in small groups and in larger groups so that the weight of caring for one another would be divided through all the whole camp. Not everything coming to, to, to Moses because he, he can't do it all. And um, so, so there's, there's a bit of data in here. There's a bit of, um, obviously the word is in here. Um, and and um, so, so one of the the. If, if it comes to health, if it comes to your own emotional health, you personally has a huge responsibility. And many of us just don't take responsibility. I'm one. Just carry on. So, so we've got to start, and we're going to read some scripture on that as well. How do you take self-care? Look after yourself. And we'll see what that means. Then we need community. That's for us, maybe visitors or new people. For our congregation, it really doesn't make much sense for us to belong to the congregation. We've got grace for it, but it doesn't really make much sense to belong to our congregation without being part of a small group. That's where real community takes place. This morning, there's not real community. There's, there's good community, but not. we don't know really know one another. We don't know what's happening in your life. That's happening in a small group community. And then, so this is, this is just where care and emotional health should be attended to. And then we've got pastoral counsel. We, we've got, we've got a, um, what do you call it, a, a counseling team in the congregation. The elders is available. Mature Christians is available in our congregation to sit with individuals that, that is struggling. There's nothing wrong with it. That's, that's, um, that's happening th right through the, through the word. We see Jesus sitting with people, helping them to heal. It says, we'll read the scripture, Jesus invited the people, he taught them the kingdom, and he healed the people. He cured those that needed healing. So pastoral care, care is needed, counsel is needed, and then we need, sometimes we need professional care. That also happens. So um, I, I, this is old data, at the moment, they reckon in South Africa, one in three people struggle with mental health. I'll say it again, one in three. That means for every three in a row, one of you probably struggles with mental health. One of our biggest challenges with healing, and especially healing emotionally, mentally, healing, if we are physically sick, I don't know why it's so easy. We um, can pray for one another. If carries on, we go to the doctor. We see the doctor. I say, I, this and this is wrong. Will you please help me? He prescribes some medicine. Normally, we take it and it helps. And we are healed. I, I, I want to give you um, the opportunity to guess how long, this is now stats data, how long neem it van het iemand die eerste tekens van emotionele um, ongezondheid ervaar totdat hij valt vrouw. Tijden. Too long. 11 years. Sure. That's the responsibility of the body. Sorry, Lisa, just go back to that. Community. Self care. We've got. We've got so many people in the congregation. We are really privileged, mature people that can really help people. But data says it takes 11 years 
from struggling to long to asking for help. And so there's a stigma or whatever, I don't know why it is like that. But it shouldn't be like that. We should be from day one as believers, be transparent and share with one another. Not isolated, not walking with the burden on your own. They reckon at the moment in South Africa, one in four people needs to, see, to, to get professional help. That's, this is before COVID. It's probably, I think, I think they've, they, they've said um, emotional health has deteriorated by 25%. So I can only find a summer market, so I can only find a three people has actually professional help, nodig, but only 10% can afford it. Because it's, I don't know, professional help that it costs 1,200 rand a year of it. It's, it's not available for people. But God has given his church to help one another. It's a as na die data kyk wat wat kerk gesond is, dan kan um, dan 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 het eintlik net omtrent 3% mense het professionele hulp nodig. Die res kan deur self care community en pastoral care gesonde lewens lei emosioneel. So 97% is can can be be helped just by ordinary Christians like us. But at the moment, 33% of people needs professional help. And just one of the things that I've read again, um, I'm, I'm, I'm still in James with my quiet time, and um, Jacobus 3 gaan alles oor die tong en die oore, en ek, dis ek kom hierdie vir my toe uitstaan, ek, ek, wil, ek wil dit net starig lees, being heard, is being loved for most people. Kan ek het weer sê, net om na iemand te luister, ervaar mense as iemand het my lief. How can we listen to one another? Can we be, can we be available? Because at the, at the speed and the, and the hurried way we are living, people sometimes feel you're not available. So how can we make sure that we live in a way that we are available, we create safe space, and we are willing to listen. Because people need that. Yeah. Good. Ach, so I've, I've, that half circle, Lisa, we, we've had it up many times in the congregation, we've shared it, and I say again, I, well, the only reason why I put it up is it helps me to know what, what I'm feeling. Because sometimes I feel something and I can't identify it. And this little circle has helped me tremendously to just circle the three emotions that I feel mostly at the moment. And I could, I could some of them... Over the last three, four years, I would circle tired, lonely, isolated, depressed. Hurt, angry, always frustrated, somewhere there, irritated, insecure, anxious, overwhelmed. And all these emotions, they would be frequently part of what I feel. And I think to myself, but this is not what God meant for me. This is not where he wanted me. And have the courage to acknowledge it. I don't know about women, but for men, to take a pen and to circle three of them and say, this is what I feel frequently. I don't know why it's so tough, but it's, it's not easy to do it. But um, I've, I've written two things down you cannot heal what you do not reveal. You cannot heal. God cannot heal. The people who love you the most cannot heal what you do not reveal. So, so we, we just have to, and the scripture is full of it. That's why James says, 
acknowledge to one another, counsel one another, help one another. If, if we do not share these things, Maybe something that it's, I think it's the same article that I read. It also said something, you cannot defeat what you do not define. So that, that's why things like these help me because I struggle sometimes to define what is it that I'm feeling. What is it that I'm struggling? I can feel I'm not, not at peace. But I don't really, what's going on? And we just keep on running. And God wants you, and we're going to get to that because it's Jesus' example. What did Jesus do? And he went aside. You need to take up time out and, and, and wrestle with God about this. Lord, why? What, what is it that I'm feeling to identify? And if we have defined it, we can defeat it. And if we reveal it, we can heal it. But without that, not possible. So, I, I want to say something about healing because I think in Christian and in church terms, I think we've got sometimes a skewed picture of, of what it means to heal. Healing is not an afspraak with the counseling team or um, with an elder or the pastor or somebody that does befreide. That's not healing. It's a part of it. Healing it's for me a photo of his discipleship. Healing takes place over a long time. And that needs for us to journey with one another. And there's different parts and aspects in that process. But healing and discipleship is very close to one another. It's, it's not this... Ik, ik, ik wil nogal, ik, 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 iemand moet terugkom hier na my toe hier oor, asjeblief. Ek sit vir ochend weer en sit en dink, ek vind nogal in die Nieuwe Testament, ek dink nou weer oor siel, lichaam en gees. Ek vind in die, in die Nieuwe Testament gereeld dat ouwens siek was en hulle moes hulle achterlos, of um, Paulus was amper by die dood omgedraai vir siekte. Ek sien fysische siekte, Redelijk teenwoordig in die Nieuwe Testament, terwijl ek glo dat ons bid vir syk is en hulle kan gezond word. But I see that it's not always happening, as ek het so kan stel. Maar ek kan nie een plek in die Nieuwe Testament vind, wat die Heere sê, I'm going to leave you with anxiety. Nee. Emotional healing. Ik ek, ek zie niet dat die Heere vir ons sê, dra maar hierdie vruchte. Ek sien Paulus bid en as sê hy, driemaal het ek gebid dat die Heere hierdie door en uit my vlees het sal haal, maar hy het het gelos om my nederig te hou. Ek sien nergens dat die Heere die vrucht van die gees van ons weghou nie. He invites us consistently to walk there. Ek weet nie veel hoor wat ek sê nie is, ons het per die keer een vreselike begeerte en is een goeie begeerte, ek wil het nie afskiet die ons bid, ek bid vir geneesing. Maar ek sien per die keer die Heere genees, weet jy hoekom, he. ek voel ook die skuldige oor, he. die Heere moet genees, ek kan nie genees, he. ek kan net bid, en ek kan groei daaran, en so. maar, maar ek sien nie dat die Heere die vrug van ons weghou om een of ander Heere nie. It's available to us, He wants to invite us into that. Healing is discipleship. Over time with the truth of God, and people we heal. We can heal. And not only physical healing, which I see is not always happening, but emotional and spiritual healing. God wants us mature in this. So just, just in Luke 9, I, I, why I think I want to say discipleship, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just read two, two verses. Discipleship and healing. When the crowds learned it, Jesus went away, so they learned it, Hulle het gehoor, hy is weg. They followed him and he welcomed them. Joy, safe space. He spoke to them of the kingdom of God. He taught them the kingdom. And he cured those who had a need of healing. So healing and knowing the kingdom of God is connected. It's not just healing. I'm gonna, now gonna, this emotion must now disappear. It's an understanding of the perspective. Who said something about the perspective we have this morning? 
can't remember. En uh, sy brand wat gesê het, wie is God vir jou? Hoe beperk jy hom of nie? So if we understand who's God, we can deal with that emotion. It can't just disappear like mist. It's, it's, a, it's a change in our mind. So that's why it's discipleship. In Colossians 3 verse 16, we read it the other day. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. See, you're the same thing. He taught them the kingdom. The message of Christ fill your life. Teach and counsel each other. Teach and counsel. So it's teaching and counseling one another. It goes hand in hand with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs to God. We're thankful. So, so I want to encourage you this morning. This was by a simple sedum. If, if things are not what it's supposed to be emotionally in your health, in emotional health, don't keep on repeating what you're doing at the moment. It's, it's not going to change. Something has to change. I, I, and I'm, um, I think it's sometimes something that we don't say often enough in church to one another. Long-term unhealthy emotions leads to physical sickness. And it's not, I'm not, it's now for some said it. The doctors can feel duidelijk how the lichaam later reageer in verkeerde goed produceer omdat die emoties consistently sick bly. God wants to heal that. And so I get all my getuienis hier ook gedeel oor my pad met cholesterol. Baie kere gegaan for a prayer of miracle to heal my cholesterol. But God wanted to heal the emotion that caused my high cholesterol. And when I allowed him through a long process to heal that, my cholesterol came down without any medication, without the prayer of miracle, but because my long-term emotions were starting to heal. And I want to encourage you with that. Really, it's, it's, it's if, if you look at the medical field, and I'm not an expert, at, uh, um, Lauren, help me recht om middelik as ek nou na ons praat, asjeblief. But there is just more and more sickness that the medical field doesn't know what to do with. They give this medication, then they have to add something for the, um, what number of it? The side effects, and then they have to add, add, add another one and another one. And they, 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 they don't, can't explain this stuff, but some of the medical field that is going into this can see how the emotions leads to. It's not now and then, it's a long-term thing. And how can God help us? Because he doesn't want us to walk around with unhealthy long-term emotions. So, Let's, let's turn, turn, turn to the word and turn to Christ. I think from my own experience, I was just thinking as I'm, I'm preparing of, um, I, I lost my, my dad, I was already 22, and, um, but just the difference from having my dad and not having my dad. We had a very good relationship and while he was alive, there was kind of a safety that I experienced in life. Just because he was present. I remember afterwards, just, just, just the insecurity that came. What's, what's going to happen now? What's going to happen with life? Um, I had so many questions I wanted to ask him. He wasn't there. He always had so much wisdom when I asked him. He would, safe. After he answered, I was safe. And that was gone. Why am I telling you this little story? It's, it connects to Sabrance's testimony this morning. The question is, in most unhealthy situations we find ourselves, it got a huge impact. What is your perspective? Who is with you? And who's not with you? So if we know that Jesus is in the boat, it makes a huge difference. But if you doubt whether Jesus is in the boat, if the insecurity and the safety is worlds apart. And I would say the second thing that we need to know is the power of the one that is with us in the boat. So for any of us that is walking with people, and hopefully it's most of us, walking with people, 
It's not your responsibility to solve the problems. You'll get burned. Because we cannot solve the problems of people. That's why Moses also got burned. Your responsibility is to remind the person you're walking with who's in the boat. That's your responsibility. Your responsibility is to remind him the power of the one that is with us in the boat. Show him to Jesus. Don't solve the problems. It's not our responsibility. Our experience in the storms we found ourselves in, and maybe it's just the emotional storm. I, I've, I sometimes felt this, all these emotions, and I would say to Miranda, it doesn't make sense. There's no storm in my life. So don't think there must be a storm to feel unhealthy on the inside. For many, many years, there was no storm in my life. Nothing. If I look at the physical, everything is, is okay. But for some other reason, I'm unhealthy on the inside. That, that even makes less sense. But anyway, so, so our perspective of how we feel on the inside changes when we know who's in the boat with us. But sometimes we throw our anchor in our own boat, think it's going to stop the wind from blowing us away. Or we want to throw it in someone else's boat. We need to anchor it to the rock. So in the council, in the filling of our lives with the riches of Christ, in the teachings, we are showing people to Jesus. We remind him of the power of Jesus. We are not there to solve the problem. And I want to read a scripture about this. And it, 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 it adds to, to that um, triangle. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And what we sometimes try and do is we work out someone else's salvation. And even we want someone to work out our salvation. So I, I just want to, and when we, when, when we are in a tough, tough situation, it's, it's, it's tough to hear. But you have got a personal responsibility. You have to work out something of the salvation that God has given you. You've got to take responsibility. We can't expect the church, I don't know who's that, that's all of us. The church is there to help, but the responsibility is yours. And don't just let it be. Don't let it carry on. Somewhere you have to work it out. You have to take responsibility. So this scripture for me speaks to me when I want to help. And it speaks to me when I'm, I need the help. It says, the responsibility is mine. I've got to take responsibility for this. And, um, and you, you see something of that with, the, with the, the parable of the lost son. When he was in the pig's day, what, what, what does it say? I can't remember, Luke, something. It says, and he said to himself, when he came to his senses, I think I said the Engels, he had with himself gepraat. So ergens het ons betek hier nodig om met onszelf te praat. En sê, my, my pa, sy ouwens wat by hom werk, het kost te veel, ek moet pele eet. Ja, yeah. ek, ek gaan nie verder hier blij waar ek is in die varkhokke. En ek wil jou aanmoedig, baie keer vind ons ons in, ons, in varkhokke met ons emoties. Die heren wil ons die haai nie. Hy wil ons een nieuwe rouw opgee vir die emoties. So, ek wil jou vir oogend aanmoedig, Praat met yourself and say, come on, let's do something about this. And miskien per ty keer, miskien help dit ook net ietsie, ek denk hoe baie keer jy dalk vir iemand raad gee. And people just, just ek, ek denk aan hoe die, hoe die pa vir die sien gesê het, ek denk jy moet die geld vat en die planne van jou, ek denk jy het gaan werke. But at the end he had to be quiet and give him his money and let him learn from himself. That also happens. It's part of this tough life. So, I will let weer say, discipleship 
is to point someone to Jesus and to remind him of his power. That's discipleship. If you want to know what that is. And I want to give us a warning, and it's to all of us. The behavior you escape to will enslave you. Not by a behavior. Isolation. Become a slave to work. Jy raak um, um, met altyd goed voorkom. Vir oogend, Ellen kan ek maar spot, vir oogend groet ek en anders vir Ellen na achter en vraag vir Ellen, hoe gaan het nou? Sê, ek gaan goed man. Maar nou in my oplees werk in die week lees ek iemand, as ons op die kerk kom, maar groet is ons altyd mekaar, as sê ons nie, het gaan fijn. As is fijn, nou all is fijn, you know. Fijn, maar hy vraagt hoe, waarvoor staan fijn? Ek hoop ek kan onthou, frustrated, insecure, neurotic and emotional but we are fine. So don't let it be like that. Be real. Be real. Um, en, en wees net baie versichtig. Want met al ons ongezonde emotie, as ons nie met dit na Jesus toe, en met na die mense toe, met wie vir ons lief is na te draai nie, draai ons na allerhande ander goed toe. It enslaves us. It promises us, um, wat is die woord wat ek soek, verlichting. Maar, maar dit vat ons net dieper. So iets hier in hierdie proces wat ek jou wil aanmoedig. En um, in, the, in, in, in healing, in discipleship, if you are not adaptable and flexible, it's not going to happen. Kan ek het weer sê? Twee woorde wat jy saam met jou moet vat, as jy saam met Jesus stap, is adaptability, flexibility and change. Dit, al wat vast is, is hy. Maar ek en jy verander die hele tyd. En ons sikkel per ty keer, om te mature, want ons is hier adaptable and flexible. Eh? But this is because this is the way it has been for 30 years. No, it doesn't have to be that way. There is a better way. Allow him to change, adapt, and um, be flexible. So, uh, ek, ek sluit af. Ek wil net weer sê, you have to identify what's going on. And you have to take responsibility. Then you have to ask help from God and his people. It's rechtig, eindelijk so eenvoudig soos dit. Het is nie baie moeiliker as dit nie. Maar ietsie wat ons nodig het, is baie humility. It's, it's normally, it's our pride that prevents us from healing. Matthew 26, 36 to 46, we, most of us know this, this scripture. Um, then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and James and John and he became anguished and distressed. Jesus can relate with your anguish and distress. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples, found them asleep, and said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My Father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, you will be done. Your will be done. When he returned to them, he found them asleep, and they couldn't keep their eyes open. So we went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and he said, Go ahead and sleep, have your rest, but look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Verse 46, six, up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. Without saying too much, what did Jesus do when he was distressed? 
when he was in anguish, when his emotions was upset, what did Jesus do? And the first thing is we can take from this is he, he, went, he went aside. He withdrew him to spend some time aside. He didn't do it alone. He took his disciples with him. And he voiced it. He voiced it. He said to them, I'm distressed. He shared it with them. And then he wrestled with God. You can see how he, he shared it with his, with his disciples, wrestled with God. And what you, what you also, he, he continued with the process. It wasn't a once-off for him. He went away and he came back. He went away and he came back. He wrestled with God. He repeated the process. And then at the end we see he found the courage to stand up to face his destiny. And to be at peace. And so, so this unhealthy emotions that all of us is struggling with is just keeping us from doing what God has called us to do. And, and if we do not draw close to one another and to God, and repetitively, we won't be able to face this life and do what He has called us to do. So I want to encourage you, it's, it's, I think it's as simple as this. He retreated to recover. He created some space he revealed it to his disciples. I wrote here, yeah, it's like vomiting. You know, we net voor jy nou opgooi, en jy is so siek, like jy, dis ook om jy opgooi. En jy probeer dit nog keer ook, excuse nou vir dat. En die volgende oomlik, daar gooi jy jy nou op. And then there's release. Nou so, om die unhealthy emotions te kan share, is maar eindelijk nou net die selle. Jy wil het, jy slik om ons af. But the next moment, it comes out. And it, when it comes out, there's release. Share it with people. Share it with people. Just maybe so, something silly, but don't share it everywhere. You share it where there is trust, where there's safe space, where there's love for one another. Share it. And then we see wrestling with God. Wrestling with God. Wrestling with God. Repeat the process with God and the disciples, with people and God. Repeat it until there's peace. And then we can stand up and say, let's go, let's face it.